So we're doing top five wheel fitment tricks. We're, re we're really gonna tell them this stuff. Like this is what we're gonna, this is what our whole video is about. All right, F it, let's do it. So it's right about this time that I'm usually here telling you about some information that you need to know to properly put wheels in your car. But we know that there's the people out there that are gonna need a little bit of help fitting those bad boys on there. So today we're gonna be talking about the top five wheel fitment tricks that you can use to fit those meaty boys under your car. What's going on? I'm Scott from Koenig. You probably know who I am, or you really don't care. Either way, if you wouldn't mind clicking that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. So generally our job here is not to tell you the tricks to fit wheels onto your car. It's just to tell you which wheels actually fit your car. But today, we're gonna go outside the box just a little bit to try to help you get your wheels inside the box. As a car guy myself, I'm obsessed with making sure that we get the most amount of wheel and tire that I can on my car. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of you. So we're gonna give you some tips that you can use to try to fit these guys on your car. But just keep in mind, some of these things are gonna be tougher than others. And in addition to that, they're not really approved. So just keep that in mind and make sure that you understand that when you head this realm, sometimes you go in there all by yourself unendorsed. I have no one now. So let's start with one of the easy ones. Point number one is going to be coilovers. Now, coilovers don't inherently by themselves allow you to put a bigger wheel, but a lot of coilovers are gonna come with a narrow diameter spring and allow that room between the tire and the suspension to have more clearance. And then you're able to fit a little bit more tire before you would crash inbound on the suspension. So that's one way a coilover can actually help you get a bigger wheel and tire package on your car. So another way that a coilover can actually help you get a bigger wheel and tire on your car is just through ride height itself. Because you can adjust that ride height up or down and really get to the point where, you know, the suspension itself is allowing the car's body to actually sit where you need to to be able to fit the wheels without having any compression issues which would possibly cause that massive boom that will destroy your body panels. We're going to stay in that same type of wheelhouse and we're going to talk about spring rates. Now, we're starting to leave that place where we feel a little bit safe and we're going to the side where we can't really endorse. You know, spring rate is one of those things that especially when you have coilovers, you usually have a choice of what kind of spring rate you're looking to put in the car. Now, I'm not advising you to do a spring rate just according to making sure that your wheels and tires don't rub. Good old rub. But it is something that some people do. And sometimes it has to do with just finding the, just a little bit more stiffness. That's what she said. To make sure that you don't have compression issues. Okay. See, look, if you're putting a wheel and tire package that's really aggressive on the car, you may find that it only rubs when you hit big bumps or you have the car loaded up, especially like in the rear. So some people will go with a slightly stiffer spring rate in order to keep the suspension from compressing. And when you do that, they are less likely to rub on their wheels and tires. So now we're getting into some of the tricky stuff, the stuff that we spend our entire living and our entire time telling you not to do. So point number three is going to be tire size. On its own merit, we're always talking about how you wanna keep the same overall rolling diameter. And that still holds true, so please do that. But sometimes even on a given wheel, you can maintain the same overall rolling diameter and actually change the size of the tire. Um, maybe it's less width, maybe a different profile height, and you kind of balance it out with the width. Okay. It's a give and a go. But if you can find the right tire size that when it sits on the wheel actually gives you just a little bit more clearance, maybe it's pulling in the shoulder width, maybe it's that slight bit of stretch, please don't stretch your tire, but adjusting the tire size a lot of times can also help you fit a different wheel and tire package onto the car. All right, so moving on to point number four, that's wheel spacers. Now you know that we spend our entire time here telling you that we don't endorse wheel spacers. It didn't change. We still don't endorse the use of wheel spacers. There's just too many variables there. However, when you have to try to figure out some fitment for your car, when you're trying to get that most amount of fitment out of your car, wheel spacers can do that. You just need to do it the right way. And we have other videos on this. We've talked about thread engagement and the importance of thread engagement. We've talked about some of the things that you wanna be careful with spacers. Go check out some of the content we have on our channel and make sure that you clearly understand what the right way to use a spacer is and what the not right way to use a spacer is so you don't do that. But again, if you can get away without using a spacer, please, please, please do it. So moving on to our next point, this is suspension settings. Now look, 
I can't stress to you enough about doing this the right way. You should never compromise your suspension settings and changing your steering geometry just to fit more wheels and tires, but plenty of people do it. So I'm gonna use this box that we have here to give you the most amount of disclaimer that I could possibly do. There's gonna be warning signs here, maybe bombs going off, I'm not really sure, but do me a favor, please be careful. Make sure you know what you're doing here before you go and do this. If you look at any given suspension settings, whether it be camber adjustment or ride height, vehicles sometimes have a range that is acceptable, right? Camber could be between one degree and two degrees. Well, if that's the case, and just that you just need that little bit of an edge to be able to fit that wheel and tire package on without causing any rubbing, this may be an option. These things clearly could be an option. So consult with somebody that really has good knowledge in setting up your particular vehicle and just make sure you're doing it safe. Okay, and here is our last point. This is just gonna be a simple one. Everybody knows this whole thing and that's actually doing some body modification. Now, clearly that includes that you possibly could roll your fenders or quarters, uh, you know, try to find somebody that can do it without destroying your paint. That seems to be really important, especially if you wanna keep your paint on the car. But look, things like rolling your quarters and fenders, things like putting fender flares or slight lips on your car, those are things that can allow you to increase the width of a wheel or the fitment of a wheel on your car right now. Now, when we start talking about things like body modifications or fender flares, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is actually how it's used. Flare can be functional. Flare can be look. If you're going for that actual function where you need the extra width out of the flare, you have to think about what is gonna go into actually performing it the right way. That means installing it to the point where you can cut the inner quarter or cut the fender that came on your car originally away so that you can utilize that extra space. Because if not, really all you're doing is you're putting like lipstick on a pig and you're gonna get to a point when you compress the suspension enough, you're going to introduce that impact that the suspension would have already had on your car anyway. Granted, this may not have been the most informative video. Uh, clearly, we've gotten more technical in other videos and you should go look at them all right now. But we know that there's a lot of people out there that are for the first time starting to modify their car and maybe this will be helpful for them. So, you know, if you don't like the video, all I could say is please go ahead and just click the thumbs up button anyway because, you know, that would be cool. But on a serious note, if you have any other questions or comments or things you'd like to say, throw them down there below and we will be happy to answer them for you. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.